The XT90 connector is the big brother in the XT connector family, and it is designed to handle extremely high currents. It is not very common in the freestyle and racing side of the hobby scene, as its bulky size makes it unsuitable for mini drones. Nonetheless, it is worth taking a look at it, if anything, for the sake of completeness. Um, David from Drone Lab. Oh my, what a plot twist. And this is everything you need to know about the XT90 connector. By now, we should all be familiar with the XT connector family. Nylon plastic, usually yellow, cylindrical brass contacts. The size follows the established trend in this connector line, stepping up from its smaller equivalents by a constant ratio. The cups at the bottom will hold a generous amount of solar and comfortably fit wires as big as gauge 12 and 10. Officially, the XT90 is rated for a mere 90 amperes, and we can confirm that, at that current, the connector will stabilize around a chill 70 degrees Celsius. But let's be honest, even my electric toothbrush will draw a little more than that on a warm day. So of course, we tested it, and found that during a 10 seconds burst, the XT90 will handle up to 270 amperes. Nine, ten. When we pushed things a little more though, we found that the wires will desolder at around 300. Still though, 270 amperes, that is a lot of current. In fact, it is a little too much even for a 12 gauge wire. Take a look at what happens when we apply 270 amperes to a 12 gauge. Eight, nine, ten. Significantly more smoke. Mmm, nice and toasty. What this translates to is, when using this connector, the only logical choice is a 10 gauge wire. So, if you're designing a drone that features an XD90, not only would you have to take into account the weight of the connector, but also the weight of the wire. In fact, with the connector coming in at 13.28 grams and the 10 gauge wire weighing 61 grams per meter, things start to get heavy. So, when exactly would you need an XD90? Well, in high current applications, of course, but how high can you go on a mini quad? Well, actually, if you go ahead and get yourself a set of Emax RS2306, 2750 kV, for example, slap on an aggressive GF5050 tri blade propeller and run it on 4S, at maximum throttle, you would reach a whopping 230 amperes. But is it really worth it to push the current this high to try and squeeze every last bit of thrust out of your motors? Here at Drone Lab, we believe that it might actually be beneficial to consider stepping up the voltage first. In fact, high currents will introduce all sorts of problems like voltage drop over the wires, high temperatures, shorter lifespan of your battery. Additionally, as it has recently been pointed out in a video by Joshua Bardwell, Repeated tests have shown that even with the same voltage KV product, a 6S battery will deliver better performance than a 4S equivalent. So maybe, before considering if you need to switch to an XT90, you should consider going 6S first, in conjunction with a lower KV rated motor, of course. I hope you found these tests useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see you around.